Hello everybody, Jim here, and welcome to Without the Numbers, the series where we scour Star Citizen archives to explain a facet of the game using official lore, flavor text, and the words of the developers themselves, because numbers are subject to change. Today's topic is fighters, but because every ship in Star Citizen can be used in a fight, we'll be defining fighter as any small ship built from a fighter frame, like all Avengers and Hornets, or any variant specially modified for combat like the Aurora LN or 325A. Bigger ships like the Cutlass, Freelancer, and Redeemer will get their own video later on. Also, this video only covers fighters priced up to $100 on the CIG website, and only loosely because the prices are numbers, and as such, they cannot be trusted. More expensive fighters will be covered next week. Now, first up is the P-52 Merlin. This is a fast, maneuverable ship with a slim profile making it difficult to see and hit during combat, but it's lightly armed, lightly shielded, easily killed once you catch the thing, unable to regenerate boost fuel, and without a quantum drive so it's completely dependent upon other ships to travel any significant distance. This is a parasite craft that is only really dangerous if you let the numbers get out of control, so I'd liken it to a flea. Next is the Merlin sister craft, the P-72 Archimedes. It's faster, better shielded, capable of regenerating boost fuel, and approximately equally well armed, but it still lacks a quantum drive, making it another parasite craft. We'll call this one a uh, mosquito. Robert Space Industries kicked off civilian spaceflight nearly eight centuries ago, and the Aurora series has been cobbled together with spare parts from that time. As a result, you'll find a basic craft so short of features that the marketing actually makes mention of the extra comfy hyper pillow technology in the brochure. The Aurora MR is a combat craft only because RSI has replaced the standard discount ballistic weapons with discount energy weapons and slapped on a fancy gun cooler. This is not a real fighter. It's a small woodland creature with a surprising bite, like a venomous shrew. The Legionnaire, on the other hand, makes significant improvements by adding a bigger, more awesome-looking cooling system, extra guns, armor, missiles, and potentially a better targeting computer. But, in the end, it's still a bunch of mismatched parts scabbed together on an outdated design. In a previous video, I called the LN a patchwork monster, and it packs an unexpected sting for those unwary enough to get close. So. I award this ship the title of platypus, because they're also weird looking and they have a very painful sting. And they lay eggs. For crying out loud, what are you, a beaver, duck, lizard, what? Make up your mind! <sighs> oh yeah, the Mustang series. Rebel trillionaire and consolidated Outland founder Silas Corner maintains that his company does not construct weapons. It simply allows weapons to be mounted on its ships for proper defense, which describes the Mustang Delta perfectly. A racing ship at heart, the Delta has been positively slathered with lasers, rockets, turrets, and stealth armor. Fast, agile, sneaky, and hard-hitting, you'd think the Delta would be a perfect fighter. But, as any Delta pilot can tell you, it lacks the shielding and durability to stand up to sustained fire. Even so, this is my personal favorite fighter. I have more fun in my Delta than any other fighter in the game. This is a cunning, agile, ambush predator that typically backs down when the big dogs come out to rumble, much like a house cat. If you're thinking to yourself, now how much damage can a house cat really do? I strongly recommend that you do not do a Google image search. I wish I hadn't, because the answer is a lot, and typically they go for the face. The Reliance series was built to be steady, reliable, and durable, so it's only natural that the hull would be repurposed for a fighting craft. Intended to be faster than the Aurora series, sturdier than the Mustang series, and armed like a poor man's Super Hornet, the Tana also makes use of alien technology, a second pilot, and an unprecedented field of view that turn this working ship into an impressive combat craft. If the developers haven't changed their minds, the co-pilot should be able to make use of wing-mounted omnidirectional turrets to fire everywhere but directly behind the ship while the pilot makes use of fixed, forward-mounted lasers and missiles. And, when the fighting is done, the crew can retire to the basic living quarters that fill the cargo hold. As much as I love flying the Delta, if this ship is as advertised when it's finally flyable, 
I'd recommend it to anybody looking for an inexpensive multi-purpose multi-crew fighter. For its versatility, impressive bite, and ungainly appearance, I award the Reliant Tana the title of Angry Wiener Dog. If you're looking for something a little more picturesque, Origin is known for their luxury touring ships, all of which are well-armed, well-armored, fast, and good in a fight, but the 325A kicks it up a notch. They've taken the already strong hull of the 300 series and added armor, they've filled all the standard hard points with some of the hardest hitting weapons available, and they've installed a specialty targeting computer, making the 325A capable of maintaining more simultaneous missile locks than the competition. In the right hands, this is a dangerous ship, but it's still a modified personal transport, so it might not be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the serious fighters. On our spaceship food chain, I'd label this a uh, wildcat, but a small one, maybe a lynx or a bobcat. The Avenger is the first ship on our list that was designed specifically for combat. In fact, it was the premier human carrier-based fighter for decades before the UEE military dumped its designer, Aegis Dynamics, in favor of Anvil Aerospace because, I kid you not, Aegis ships were associated with the Star Citizen equivalent of Space Hitler. But, much like the Germans of today, Aegis Dynamics turned its wartime engineering into technology modified for civilian markets. The Avenger is fast, agile, well-shielded and armed, and in my opinion a very good fighter. You won't find living facilities beyond a bed, but there is a super cool entry ramp in the back and lots of interior space for some excellent modules. These modules come in three flavors. The Titan is basically a fighter with a box in the back that can be used for cargo. The Stalker fills that box with prisoner containment units, which makes it perfect for police work and bounty hunting. And the Warlock comes filled to capacity with an electromagnetic pulse generator, capable of setting off an EMP burst that knocks out ship systems in a wide radius around the Avenger itself. It also looks and sounds super cool. Here's a clip. <laughs> The Avenger, if somewhat outdated, is an efficient hunter, well designed for catching its chosen prey. Kind of like a penguin. Penguin variants include a stun gun and a fish cooler module. Finally, we have another older Aegis fighter design, the Gladius. This is a fast, dogfighting oriented ship. There is no significant cargo space or fancy pants modules. It hasn't been repurposed for police work or bounty hunting. It's a fighter, pure and simple. Armament, Armor and shields are light compared to modern military ships like the Sabre, but there is no question that this ship is purpose-built for killing and devouring its enemies. Kind of like a falcon. <coughs> and that does it for fighters in the 0 to 100, or thereabouts, price range. We should be back next week with the Sabre, the Hornet series, and all the other ships that typically trounce the ships this week in fair fights all over Arena Commander. If you're from the future and you want to know about fighters which haven't been released at the time this video was posted, I'll put links in the description of this video as they come out regardless of price. To everybody who's watched, subscribed, commented, or shared my videos, I want you to know that last week has been pretty good to my channel and I blame you! Thanks very much and I'll see you, hopefully, next time.